discuss about the nervous system. Nervous system control of the respiratory system. Diameter of airway is usually determined by the autonomic nervous system that is consists of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic innovation causes relaxation of the bronchioles, smooth muscles which increase diameter to allow more airflow. This is used in exceptions, for example, to allow more air into the lungs, therefore, increase the rate of gas exchange at the volume level. As far as the forest, uh, parasympathetic system innovation is concerned, work to increase a smooth muscles contraction and reduce diameter. Then, Resting, it is not necessary to have a high inflow into the lungs. Inspiration versus expiration. Resistance is also slightly different on inspiration and expiration due to the diameter of the area. On inspiration, the positive pressure within the alveoli and the small airway causes the diameter to increase, therefore, resistance decreases. The opposite is true for expiration, airway narrow due to the low pressure and so resistance will increase. In force expiration, the lungs compress and the small airways are narrowed, causing the resistance to increase further. Because of this, some air is trapped in the alveoli and cannot be extended. This is the residual volume. Turbulent versus laminal flow. What is the turbulent flow? What is the laminal flow? First, you will see the laminal flow. Laminal flow is where the air is flowed through the tube in parallel layers with no disruption between the layers and Central layers flow with greater velocity. Turbulent flow is when the air is not flowing in parallel way, but direction, velocity, and pressure within the flow of air become chaotic. If air flow becomes turbulent, the pressure difference required to maintain air flow to me will need to be increased, which in turn would increase turbulence and therefore resistance. This means that turbulence leads to a need for a much greater difference in pressure to move the air. In physiological terms, this means the pressure differences between the outside of air and within the lens would need to be increased so the intercostal muscles and back lungs would need to work harder to expand and contract the lens. Here is an example. You can see the turbulent air flow, which is disturbed, which is not parallel. But if you see the laminar, it's in the parallel. Air is going from one side to another side. And this is more smooth. Lungs volume. Now we talk about, how we talk about the lungs volume. It is used to divide the total space within the lungs into volumes and capacity. This can be measured too. As in the definition, definitive diagnosis, quantification, and monitoring of the disease. They allow an assessment of mechanical condition of the lungs, its muscular airway resistance, and the effectiveness of gas exchange at the alveolar membrane while being, for the most part, cheap, non invasive, and simple to measure. Here are certain volumes are discussed over here. Length volume, tidal volume, respiratory, reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume, and residual volume. What is tidal volume? Volume that enter and leave with each breath. Means while we are breathing and exhaling, the air comes and goes out that is a tidal volume. From a normal quiet inspiration to a normal quiet expiration. And there the quantity of that air is about 0 0.5 liter. Change the pattern of breathing that is shallow breath versus a deep breath increase in parallel. So the sudden condition where this inspiration expression is like pregnancy. 
Its inspiration is reserve volume, extra volume that can be breathed in above tidal volume. What would, what you inhale or exhale? If it be, it is a normal inhalation or by force inhalation, then it will increase the volume from 0 0.5 to 2.5 liters. From normal quiet inspiration to maximum inspiration. Re and release on muscles system. Relies on muscle system, or stronger, pectoral, major, pectoral, major, intercostal muscles. Then it is inferior. Elastic coils, three coils, and a normal starting point end of the tidal volume. Then expiratory is a volume, extra volume that can be breathed out below tidal volume from the normal quiet expiration to the beginning expiration. It's about 1.5 meter. Relies on muscle system and low air resistance, reducing pregnancy, obesity, severe obstruction, or the proximal trachea bronchial obstruction. Then we have got a residual volume or reserve volume. Volume remain after maximum expiration. It's about 1.5 liter. And cannot be measured experimentally. There is an instrument to measure the volume through a parameter, but residual volume cannot be measured. Capacities are composite of two or more lung volume. They are fixed as they do not change with the pattern of motion. Capacity, description, expression, area, average, and notes. Vital capacity, force vital capacity, volume that can be exhaled after maximum inspiration to maximum expiration. We take a deep breath and take out to clear all muscle cells that from your lungs that is known as vital capacity. Inspired reserve volume plus tidal volume, reserve volume plus expiratory volume. The inspiratory respiratory volume plus tidal volume. It's about 4.5 meters. Often change in disease required, disease required adequate compliance, force of muscles and low air, air resistance. Then inspiratory capacity, volume breathed in from a coil expiration to maximum expiration. Then you take out the air from your mouth outside with a coil. Exhalation means smoothly and then take a deep breath. Tidal volume plus inspiratory volume is known as inspiratory capacity. That is three liters. Then functional and residual capacity volume remaining after quiet expression. When you expire, when you take it, take out your when you take out your air from the lungs, and after that, remaining volume is known as Expiratory volume. Expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume is equal to 3 liters. Many things, etc. Then total lung capacity, volume of air in lungs after maximum inspiration, sum of all volumes, that is, restriction less than 80 percent, hyperinflation more than 120 percent, measured with premium dilution. So, total lung capacity is six. Liter. Anatomically, the that space is the volume of air that will never reach a lower and so never participate in respiration includes volume in upper and lower respiratory tract up to and include, including the terminal bronchioles. Alveolar distributives, dead space is the volume of air that reaches alveoli but never participate in respiration. For example, due to the under perfusion from the hypoxic constriction, due to the constriction of the vessels, there is lack of oxygen and because of that. Here, the capacity is given over here. Respiratory volume 
then put tidy volume, then expiratory volume, then reserve volume, and residual volume. Respiratory capacity and functional residual capacity. Then vital capacity is this. Residual volume over there. And total length capacity is about 6 liters. So, mechanism of breathing. The process of inspiration and expiration are vital for providing oxygen to the tissues and removing carbon dioxide from the body. Inspiration occurs via contraction of the muscles, such as diaphragm, which separates abdominal cavity from the thoracic cavity. That's a muscular layer. Where is the expiration? Expiration tends to be positive at rest. This process changes slightly when breathing shows. The lungs and breathing, the lungs are evolved, involved. In, in parietal and visceral pleura envelope. The lungs are envelope means covered by parietal and visceral pleura, parietal pleura towards the chest and visceral on the lungs. And the space between the lungs and thoracic wall is called the pleural space. This is usually filled with the pleural fluid which form a pleural seal that holds the outer surface of the lungs against the inner surface of the thoracic wall. This ensures that when the thoracic cavity expands or reduces, the lungs move with it due to the surface tension of the pleural fluid, forming the pleural seal. Therefore, the contraction and relaxation of certain muscles during the breathing causes movement of them, changing the volume of air within the lungs. Boyle's law states that when temperature is constant, the volume of the gases is inversely proportional to pressure. When the pressure will increase, the volume will decrease. If the volume will decrease, the pressure will increase. Therefore, when the lungs expand, increasing the volume of the air within them, pressure decline. When the pressure of the air outside the lung is greater than the air inside air will rush into the lungs and vice versa. Inspiration. Inspiration allow air to be moved into the lungs and require the contraction of the various muscles. The diaphragm and extend into the costal muscles contract. When the diaphragm contract, it flatten, pressing down on the abdominal content and lifting the thoracic cavity. This leads to increase in the volume of the thoracic cavity. The diaphragm is the most important muscle in inspiration as it amounts to 60 to 80 percent of the work in ventilation. Contraction of the external intercostal muscles leads to elevation of the ribs and sternum. These actions cause an increase in the volume of air. According to the Boyle's law, an increase in the volume of the air results in decrease the pressure of the air within the lungs. Pressure outside the lung is larger compared to inside and air rushes into the lungs as gas molecules move from an area of high pressure to low pressure. Here is a figure of lung. You can see that thoracic air is separated through the diaphragm, which is shown by right dome and left dome. Then right cruise and left cruise. So anatomical position of the diaphragm. Passive expiration, expiration allow the removal of air from the lungs and at rest is passive, relying on the elastic recoil. The lungs has got a recoil tendency. If you will stay the lungs, it will come to its original position after a certain period of time. The diaphragm and external intercostal muscles relax and return to their resting position. In the same way, the diaphragm also it goes up. Decrease the cavity 
for a security and if these are done in the same way it will come down by stretching it becomes straight which is the bone and it causes increase in the thoracic capacity the elastic recoil of this stretch lungs causes them to recoil back to their original volume rather than due to an active movement due to the boy's law a reduced volume air leads to an increased pressure of the air within the lung when the pressure within the lungs is greater than the outside air rushes out of the lungs as gas molecules go from an area of high pressure to the low pressure inspiration and expiration thoracic cavity expansion you can see when you are inspired take air in you need a greater space so the lung also expand and the thoracic cage is also expand thoracic cavity reduces when you expire and extend into costal muscle also relax and this will reduce the capacity of the lungs and the thoracic cavity forced breathing forced breathing require active inspiration and expiration efforts with the help of accessory muscles what is accessory muscles that on the chest pectus nasal pectus nasal at the neck sternocleidomastoid muscles then we have got intercostal muscles and we have got a serratus interior which is under the arm this is similar to the normal inspiration diaphragm when external intercostal but require efforts from the inspiratory accessory muscles such as the scleris sternocleidomastoid as you mentioned pectus nasal pectus that is on the chest and serratus interior which is at the sides and latissimus dorsi these muscles are known as the accessory muscle which help in the respiration this is inspiration and expiration force expiration unlike normal expiration this is an active process it involves contraction of the abdominal muscles the abdominal muscles are rectus abdominis which are six muscles which force the diaphragm upwards reducing the volume of the thoracic cavity it also requires contraction of the inter internal intercostal muscle and in the most intercostal muscle this pulls the ribs down both these action contribute to a decrease thoracic volume and pressure is inversely proportional to the volume as much as the pressure will increase the volume will increase if the volume will increase the pressure will decrease therefore pressure within the lungs increase forcing the air out quicker than the normal expiration in next class we will talk about the regulation of the respiration